Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it is time for part five of the Q&As. Finally, we are at the end, so let's finish this up. Is it safe to squat, deadlift, and bench whilst pregnant? Well, most IFBB Pro bodybuilders are clearly pregnant when you look at them and they do just fine. But on a more serious note, Yes, it is, as long as your doctor doesn't feel that it's going to be an issue. Again, when you're pregnant, always talk to your doctor, get their input on it. But as long as you're healthy and strong enough to do so, and you've built a foundation already, I think it is perfectly safe and fine to do so and probably beneficial. But I will add the caveat that I wouldn't lift overly heavy. I would probably stay within 70% intensity, so no more than 70% of your max don't be doing any heavy, heavy, ultra heavy lifting or trying max effort work. But I think overall what I've observed with women who were relatively fit and trained already when they've gotten pregnant and who continue to keep their basic compounds and their moderately heavy training in their program even through the third trimester, the ones that I've known over the years, all of them claimed they had easier labors, they had fairly easy labors again because they have such a strong, powerful core all of those muscles are so strong and well-developed, they were able to push the baby out of it easier. And they bounced back. Their, their recovery after giving birth was just so much better because all of those muscles were still toned. They were still strong. And they were able to recover and get their fitness levels up back so fast compared to, to most women because of that. So I would say it's very beneficial to do so as long as you keep it within certain limits and you're consulting with your doctor. All right, next question. How did you deal with your herniated disc when you were younger? This was before I started lifting. I must have been, I could have been 16, I think I was 15. It's kind of hard to remember. It's been over 20 years ago. But I did, I herniated my disc carrying a pack of shingles up a ladder. We, my dad and I were re-roofing our own house because my dad, even though he's relatively wealthy, is a bit cheap and so he liked to do anything himself that he could do without paying anyone to do it. So we were re-roofing one of the houses and when I dropped the pack of shingles down, I was stood at a wrong angle and one of my lower discs slipped and I saw the x-rays. It was definitely slipped. It was at least an inch out of place. And my back was kind of, you know, kind of wampus. And I went to a chiropractor three times a week and had it everything put back into place. He did a lot of like massage work on a machine, this roller that went over my back and other things. And I can't remember everything that he did, but he did that. And after about eight weeks of doing this literally three times a week, my back stayed in place. And then all the x-rays, it showed it to be perfectly in place. I didn't have to have any sort of medical procedure done that corrected it it stayed in place and it has never bothered me again since in fact i can't say that i've ever really had a major back strain in all of my years of lifting including doing heavy deadlifts so that pretty well sorted it out so since then i've been a fan of chiropractors a lot of people don't like them but the reality is i had a clearly slipped disc i had a chiropractor sorted out without me having to have a surgery and have never had a problem with it again so that's how i dealt with it all right, last question of the week. If on HRT for HGH deficiency, bringing my HGH levels to normal, am I any different from the average natural athlete or am I benefiting in some way that I am unaware of? Okay, don't confuse this with normal TRT because we do know that TRT doses that keep you in the normal range are superior to natural production. You will gain more muscle we have plenty of research showing that you will gain a small amount more muscle and it has to do with the constant levels because normally people's levels fluctuate through the day and hitting that peak level that you get from the injection is what people only get at their highest peaks in the day. And even that's one of the reasons that all this worry about fluctuation doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if you spike it, it's just going to drop a little later. Whereas in you're held at a constant level, so you gain more. Whereas with HGH, large changes in HGH levels don't seem to affect muscle growth or your gains. So you might get faster connective tissue healing and regeneration than you had when you were deficient, but that's only going to keep you at the normal level. You're not going to see any real change in progress. You don't really have any advantage. So I would still count that person as effectively a drug-free athlete. And it won't matter because they won't catch you on a drug test anyways. 
someone who's using HGH, that way they could literally put you through every drug test known to man Olympic style and you would come up clean. So if you want to compete as a drug tested athlete, you have no problems doing so. You will never fail a drug test as long as you're using your prescribed dose. All right, guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time. But let me give you guys a bicep shot before I go.